Good morning. It's Angela Kerr with the Interviews of Average Americans Project. We're here today in Trinidad, Colorado to interview Harry Anderson who has built his home completely off-grid and he solved two important problems for America. One, he has built a home that is energy efficient and is uh, financially efficient and he's also created an environment and a home where he has no loan payment. So we're going to knock on the door and interview Harry about how he came to create this accomplishment. This morning we have arrived at the home of Harry Anderson who has built his entire property off-grid. Incredible. He's been working on this project for many years as we're heading up the hill here. We'll be able to see the front entrance. Out in the middle of God's country. Take a look at that. There he is, Harry Anderson. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Hi, so you know we're taking some interviews. For people who are solving problems, mm -hmm. I'm following you around, Harry. We can go sit in the, the room if you'd like, so I can get you, or you can I can follow you around. However, but we're talking to Americans about solving problems, and I heard that you were building a home completely off grid, and I thought I would ask you some questions about that. Okay. So first of all. Would you mind, I'm going to try, see if I can get some better light here, that's better, telling me a little bit about what caused you to think about getting a home off-grid, and how long ago did you start this project? Well, this has always been a dream of mine. I always wanted to build a house off-grid, totally self-sufficient, have no bills, have no electricity bills, no water bills, and it's just a dream of mine. It's um, a passion of mine. I've actually done it, or I'm in the process of it. Right. Close to finishing. So how long have you been working on this project? Actually, I actually have owned this land about 13 years, <clears throat> and really started on the house about six years ago. Really got going on it about two years ago, and uh, I'm about 95% right now. So Finished. would you mind telling us a little bit about the types of features that you have in the home and how you went about doing that? And I can follow you around if you'd like to show us specifically. Sure. If we want to start downstairs. Okay, let's do that. Greenhouse. This, this room actually helps heat the house. It's a total mess down here in the basement, but it's still under construction. This is actually a lot of square footage. How, how much square footage is in the home? There's close to 5,000. Beautiful. Um, 4,900. Oh this is goodness. the heart of the room that actually heats the, heats the house. It's really um, warm in here. It is. Uh, we're in midsummer right now. Actually, in the wintertime, it's actually warmer in here. Uh, this is designed by a solar architect, and um, when the sun's at a lower angle, it actually comes right across here at 30 degrees. This is all south-facing. Look at this beautiful view. So all these windows are just double-pane windows, but they're actually sliding, sliding glass doors were taken apart and saved. Oh, nice. I have friends in this business, and. They sell these paints for ten dollars a piece. Um, they're into recycling, so they're cheap and it's, <laughs> and it's easy to build. Uh huh. So the whole trick to this room is that this has a cement slab floor, but everything in here is floating on uh, insulated foam. There's uh, actually two inches of foam under this concrete. Plus, there's foam all the way around this slab. So the sun heats up this slab. It also heats up this back wall here, which is 
13 inches thick, solid concrete. And we have a dark color um, stucco on it. So that absorbs the heat of the sun during the day and radiates it during the night. And that's, and that's why it always stays warm here. Beautiful. <clears throat> this slab, when I finish it, I'll probably put a dark color tile or some tile over it. It's uh -huh. probably a black floor, so it'll absorb the heat, hold it, and give up its heat during the night. Uh -huh. Oh, I see those are quite dark. Mm -hmm. So your plans so, for this room? Uh, I'll be growing all my own food in here. Um, vegetables, herbs. Uh -huh. And I tried to get it tall enough to where I could actually grow some trees back here in the back room. And how tall is that wall? It's 14 feet. 14 feet. Mm -hmm. And you've got a skylight in there. Those help bring in um, light to heat. And when it gets too hot, I can control the heat by opening those skylights actually open and close. Uh huh. And then a couple windows, front windows here that open and close. So I can get a natural convection airflow through here by having those. This back wall here also, you can see some insulated pipes coming out of here. Uh, I'll actually be picking up the heat from, there's a serpentine uh, series of copper tubing in this floor. Mm -hmm. um, that'll pick up heat if I needed it. I don't think I need any of this, these extra things I've done in here because this house stays really warm. It's but this copper pipe floats back and forth on this floor and it's going to be picking up heat from during the winter. Beautiful. I'll run water through those pipes if I needed it and um, run it into a hot water heating system for domestic hot water. Also on this wall back here, um, I have pipes in here that three quarter inch pipes that run back and forth through the wall to actually pick up heat off there too. I doubt I'm ever going to need that system though in the house. But you've, you've prepared for whatever strategy might be necessary. And that's only because I'm a heating contractor by trade heating oh, air yes. condition. So I did all these extras that I doubt that I'm going to ever need. Uh -huh. um, also, if you look on the other side of this wall, there's actually foam blocks in here. Well, you can see one up there. And I have them, they're all along the top of the wall. Yes. And they're actually all along the bottom. Originally, I was going to um, knock those out. Cold air would flow into the bottom, come out the top, and run ductwork through here and heat the house. But this is all overkill. And like I say, being on a heating contractor, I'm always thinking of heating the house. But this house is actually built out of foam block. You can see it's all styrofoam around it. You end up actually with about oops, three inches thick with um, 10 inches of concrete in between. So... You actually end up with about R50 in the walls. R50. Yeah, which is a pretty high R value for walls. Right. So that's why it stays cool in here in the summertime and warm in the winter. Well, um, you've certainly chosen a lovely spot to build your home. Yeah. And probably spent a lot of time looking for a piece of property. And then you started the structure of the design and you work with an architect that was specialized in this type of home, which is completely off-grid? That's right. Or is this design basically yours? Mm -hmm. And he was a solar architect, that's what I wanted. Ah, uh -huh. Someone specialized in a heating home, basically by the sun. Mm -hmm. um, and are you using any wind I technology? Am. I will have a, a wind tower outside. Um, just... Um, an old street light that I found, uh, aluminum pipe, and that'll be make a great tower. So I'm actually going to have about 1,200 watt wind generator. Chinese are making these now, and they're very cheap compared to anything American made, and they're efficient. And um, so you've done a lot of research on uh, the whole alternative energy subject matter in order to put all of these various ideas together. I have. Uh, if we go outside, I'll show you the okay. solar cells you're going to run this house. Now, there's all sorts of different types of solar cells on the market today. How did you decide which of the products to choose? There are. I just did research. Um,
exiting the through the basement. A lot of times solar cells are put on top of the house on a roof. Uh huh. We get a lot of snow down here sometime and, and I didn't want to have to go up on that roof which is slippery, it's all metal. Mm hmm To have to go up there and clean it. So it's muddy down here. It's okay. So I just attach these cells to uh, this deck. Uh -huh. And they'll be easier to clean if I ever need to get snow off them. So there's a 208 watt sharp solar cells. Um, they got about 3,000 watts of um, solar electricity to produce. So that'll be enough, plenty enough to run the house. Um, nighttime use batteries to store the energy. Right. Um, Good grief, how, how many feet high is this structure here? Of the, the solar, solar cells. cells itself? Uh huh. Well, up to the top of that deck, that's probably 14 feet. 14 feet. And then how many feet wide um, is that structure? The solar cells? Uh huh. I think it's around maybe 18 by uh -huh. 18, something like that, square. Mm hmm. The house is actually all self, fa self facing, so the house is wider than it is. See your, your greenhouse. So the house is actually 62 feet wide and 30 feet deep. All south facing, so get all solar gain from it. Right. Beautiful. And you've used what? What kind of roof is that? It's just a metal roof, metal roof. panel, 26 gauge metal. Uh huh. I went with metal because it's. Um, get a better break on your insurance for fire. I see. Also, the other advantage is with the metal roof is that you can catch rainwater. You can even filter it and drink it. I'll be using it just for um, the greenhouse watering plants. Mm -hmm. And any excess, uh, I'll probably run a PVC pipe down this hill, put a stock tank down there, and uh, down the hill help here. feed to it. And have a lot of deer and elk there. That view. Outlands. Yeah, it's semi-arid out here, so it gets really dry. I just wanted to help the animals a little bit, too. Right. So. That's a fabulous idea. I'm just going to pan the back of the house one more time so everyone can see it. And this is just absolutely beautiful out here. And there is lots of, of uh, wind and lots of sun. There is, like now. It's so right now. Wind generator would be producing power. Uh -huh. A lot of people don't like wind, but... When I see wind or hear wind, I think of, I see power being produced. <laughs> exactly. So it's a positive for you. Absolutely. Harnessing the nature, mm -hmm. as it were. Well, that's just beautiful. So what other features about the house would you like to tell us? Maybe take us inside to the uh, upstairs of the house, if there's anything you'd like to show us up there. Sure. Okay, I'm going to follow you. I think I stepped in a little mud, Harry, so I'll try not to, dra to drag that into your house. And being I'm in the construction trade, and I have a lot of friends in it, um, you can build a house a whole lot cheaper than a lot of people think. Um, take, for instance, this door. This was just given to me. It was ordered from a house, uh, I think, uh, U.S. Homes. Somebody custom ordered this door. It wouldn't fit, so... Um, a friend of mine just ended up with it, and he used to save material like this. You can see a lot of these beams up here, <laughs> they have addresses on them. They were just extras from a house. It's right up there, a U.S. home. Right. You, you an just, address up there. You don't believe... He would, he would just go around saving wood, and uh -huh. uh, I asked him one day, what are you going to do with all of this? And he said, well, I'll probably build a house someday, but I'll never get around to it, so... I gave him $20 for a couple pickups, full full of wood and it actually saved me a lot of money so so you were able to really take advantage of not only the industry that you were in but waste something that would have been wasted otherwise absolutely and it ended up in this house uh -huh. this foam on the wall is um, a special high density foam that a friend of mine um, shoots and it's got a really high R value so he only had to shoot a couple inches in here and you still end up with uh, 
I think he said he ended up with R25 in there. These walls are six inches thick, so he actually got about four inches in there. So <clears throat> that is close to being conducive to the R value that I get with this foam. Uh huh. So foam and cement. That's right. Is the secret. <laughs> For this house. Anyway. For this house. Uh, I actually ended up with a lot of concrete in this house. I think I have 220 yards of concrete. Mm -hmm. And so, although there are some of your materials that have been provided maybe at uh, less expensively because you're part of the trade and you have people that you know, in reality, you've put this together uh, relatively inexpensively and I understand that you have no loan on this home and that you've done all of the work inside yourself and contracted out some of the work. That's right. And saved a lot of money. Uh-huh. So by uh, the time that you finish, you have no loan, no expenses for utilities, and you are also able to generate your own power. That's right. That this may be something that Tremendous. Um, this is a, actually a battery box, an insulator box. I just built this a couple of days ago to house the batteries that are actually going to feed this. And they're down in the garage down below. Mm -hmm. um, contrary to proper belief, you can buy batteries cheap too. Um, I have a friend that recycles batteries and uh, a major train company here. So you have it insulated? Uh, it is. It's got foam board around it. Uh huh. Um, There'll be holes in here. The reason it's to build an angle um, when batteries are being charged, especially wet batteries, they produce hydrogen and oxygen, which is an explosive gas. So you have to vent that when these are being charged. And mm -hmm. um, there'll be a, a hole in this upper corner with a three inch PVC pipe, and then one down here in this lower corner, and let, that'll let fresh air flow through here, and it'll be run outside and vented. So that event, these um, explosive gases that um, wet batteries do produce. But then again, I was talking about batteries. Um, batteries can cost fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a piece. Yes. These large batteries I'm putting in here, I actually found them for brand new, fifty dollars a piece. Eight <laughs> of them. They were just misordered by a major. Uh, train company here and being they're considered hazardous waste they had to pay someone to pick them up haul them off and uh, like I said he sold them to it for fifty dollars a piece so my goodness he made money taken away from this major train company yes I'm not gonna mention the name <laughs> <laughs> so I had eight of them and I actually needed nine of them they're special eight volt batteries they use three of them to start diesel locomotives oh I see very big batteries they weigh uh, 460 pounds a piece. Um, they're eight volt batteries. So you, me and I have a 24 volt system. I will take three of them in series. That'll give me 24 volts, and then three of them in parallel, and uh, that'll give me the correct ampere hours I'm going to need for this house. It's actually way way more than I need, but I did have to buy one of the batteries brand new, and it was eighteen hundred dollars. But still a, a huge cost savings. A huge savings that's and true. once again, really just by being industrious and talking to people and, and finding alternative ways to put together what you that's would right. like to achieve. Forklift batteries were great for off grid homes. Forklift um, batteries. I was at the same place about a year before. Uh huh. Camp George West had a brand new forklift battery. Again, it's considered hazardous waste. Um, they're a government agency, they like to waste. So, again, this guy had to come and pay to haul this battery off, even though it's sitting in this lot brand new in a case. Uh -huh. He sold me that battery for $100, and that's a 1800 ampere hour battery that um, would normally cost uh, probably 2800 for that battery. But brand new, um, $100. Right. It just needs acid put in it, the electrolyte, and that's... Easy to find. So, Harry, you said that you did quite a bit of research. Could you inform our viewers where where did you go to put some of these ideas together? Was there a specific uh, central information? Actually, just the internet. I self-educated myself. Mm -hmm. um, 
Home Power Magazine is a great resource for off-grid homes. Uh, it's kind of the Bible of off-grid homes. And uh, I use a lot of information out of Home Power Magazine. Excellent. So hint, hint to all the viewers to uh, collect that magazine and, and do some research to That's see right. what they can do. Richard Perez, uh, he's the editor of the magazine. And, uh -huh. uh, he's been in this business for years. And he does a great job with this magazine. So I'm going to I'm going to have you travel upstairs and tell me what you can find there. This this garage is is great. I mean, I'm not a man and I I think that this garage is absolutely awesome. It's huge. It You're going to have great. a lot of space it's to store all of your cars. How I much? I just have a lot of classic cars. Classic uh, cars to store. Safe place to store them. So uh -huh. They'll be down here. Beautiful. We won't even ask you what's behind the yellow door, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a room for storage. Uh -huh. And all of this work, you said you've d done mostly yourself with the help of just a couple of people, so you've been able to save quite a bit on labor by That's doing right. the work yourself. Some of these heavy beams, like this beam here that holds the house, I had to get a crane service out here. Uh -huh. so a friend helped me set that, but basically just um, a couple of friends of mine. Uh -huh. and they had time to help me out. Um, the only thing I really didn't do, um, I do drywall and that's fine, but uh, I can tape. But it takes me forever, so I had uh, the same company that did the stucco work. They did the texture taping, and they did a great job. Beautiful. And I see that you have some entertainment here for your guests. In, in the middle of yeah, your living like room. It just seemed like a great place for a swing. So <laughs> that beam up there is 19 feet high, and it seemed like a good place for a swing. So <laughs> just for a joke, I put a swing in there. <laughs> That's so much fun. Well, tell me a little bit more about so, how you looked at putting the design together. Is there anything significant about how you designed the space? Uh, you know, I basically on a house that was... Um, would achieve um, the solar gain that I wanted. So, like I say, the house is wider than it is narrow, south facing. Um, it's, I think, 62 feet wide and 30 or 32 feet deep, all south facing this way. Uh huh. Uh, I also wanted a house when I got older where I wouldn't have to climb stairs. So, it's, um, it's a walkout basement, but on this side of the house, um, it's like a ranch. Uh huh. This level right here. Right. So when you walk out this way, since we came in the other way, just to give a little That's bit right. of view. It is actually ground level. Right. Mm -hmm. It is. And you did some things with lighting out here, right? <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, I'm really into LEDs, and they are so cheap. I uh, actually put LEDs in these, the front steps here. So that when, when it's late you and you're driving up the driveway, you can see where you're going and provide some light. You might be able to see. Let me turn them on. I don't know if your camera will pick them up. Uh-huh. Let's see. Let's see if we can see his LEDs. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> that should be a blue light. It is. Does it is. Show? It is definitely blue. We can see them. Looks like you had not only skill, but you had a lot of fun with it. I did. That should be a green one. Uh huh. <laughs> a red one. So, whatever possible holiday there is, you can light your house accordingly, huh? Beautiful. I just did it for a joke, but uh -huh. it's, it looks nice in front of the house, especially uh -huh. when it's dark out. Um, if you weigh the house. You had mentioned that you were going to uh, consider placing some wind technology here. Could you show us how sure. you would design that? I actually have a hole dug over here. I'm going to have a cement slab in here. Uh -huh. and, uh, this old street light, it's all aluminum pole. It seemed like the perfect hole to hold a wind generator. So this is 26 feet long, and I'll actually extended another 12 feet um, get up in there quite a bit quite a ways above all these trees and the house yeah and uh, 
I have a system inside with a, a big sure, hinge a of the house here. lower this unit and uh -huh. work on it if I need to and then pull it back up. Right. So that hole is about five feet deep. It, I, I think it's going to take about three yards of concrete when I actually finish it to uh, support this base. It'll oh be yeah. A bigger and deeper than what you see now, right now. Exactly. And there we can see the the deck that is wrapping around the. That's right. The top well, we of get the... such good wind here that um, it's almost a plus or an, and a must. You have a wind generator because the wind blows up here constantly. And the outside is stucco. That's right. And stucco is well known for keeping homes cooler. It or, is, and it has that southwest look, which uh -huh. I always wanted to build a southwest home. Let's see. So if you want to go inside, I'll show you the sure. layout of the rooms and all. Perfect. So you uh, obviously are a business owner, so you work all throughout the week. That's right. You're suggesting that you came down as a weekend warrior to I do. build this over the several years that you've been putting this together. And I would have been a lot further along, but we do a lot of partying down here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have to take out time for yourself every once in a while. That's right. Problem is, I do it a little too often. <laughs> This is the laundry room. I wanted this on the first floor. I didn't uh -huh. want to climb stairs. Actually, that's a nice size laundry room. It is. It'll be a washer dryer, a sink in that corner. Uh huh. Table to fold clothes over here. Exactly. Well, I need a wife to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the living room. Uh, I just finished this rock wall. I haven't finished it yet, but. I was liking moss rock walls, so went around the land, picked up moss rock, hung it on the wall, and uh, just getting ready to uh, grout it in. And then you the have a, <clears throat> a wood burning stove? That's right. That? It's so that probably one? way too big for the house. I've had to have this running. Again, a friend of mine had this stove, and he didn't want it in his house anymore, so $100 for a stove. Oh, outstanding. You've had a lot of opportunities present themselves as you started the construction of the home then. That's right. That's great. I have another piece of land up here where a friend of mine found a piece of petrified wood and uh, he's been digging it out in sections and that's what this is. Um, my goodness. Way heavier than it looks. I'm going to get back so I can see perspective. Oh my goodness. As he's digging it out, he's actually digging the base of Every piece he takes out, uh, it's getting bigger and bigger, and we're going to have to use heavy equipment now to get it out. This thing could be 100 feet tall. I don't know how tall it is, but <laughs> this little piece was showing. He dug it out, and it's just been breaking off in perfect sections. So your property is also providing you artistic opportunity. It is. That's just, that's just beautiful. That will be quite the conversation yeah. piece. And I actually think this is a water fern. I've never seen a tree that's shaped like this. That's amazing. I think it's just uh, How old could something like that be? It's 10 million years. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But I think it's a water fern from the Cretaceous period. Isn't that something? And it just petrified. Uh huh. Just picked up kitchen cabinets and just started hanging them. And actually Angela helped me this weekend <laughs> hanging these. <laughs> I had a chance to participate in home construction. So Home Depot actually had to say home cabinets. Um, just happened to walk in there at the right time, order them, and uh, it worked out. So we hung these top cabinets this weekend. And cabinets take a little longer than you might think hanging. Especially your walls aren't quite straight. Right. I used to level everywhere, but these outside walls, when they were built, um, contractor helped had helped me pour them. I didn't get a chance to put a level on here and he was in a hurry. So uh -huh. these walls leaned out just slightly, maybe a half inch and 10 feet, but that raised havoc with this wall. 
So, as you know, we had to shim these, but we got it looking good. Now, have you ever built a home before, Harry? Uh, a garage. A garage? Uh, my father um, built an addition on his house years so, ago when I was a kid, but this is my first house. That is absolutely incredible that mm -hmm. you were able to put this type of structure together. Mm -hmm. So, all of this is self-taught. Pretty much. So, our viewers can... Uh, really stop making any excuse about not being in the construction industry all the way. They could uh, educate themselves, they could seek out various reference materials and, uh, and these foam create a strategy. Quick. They're just building blocks that snap together. Uh -huh. um, you lay rebar in it horizontally and then vertically every four feet. Um, then it's all tied together with tie wire and concrete support in it. Um, but the advantage is um, very high R value when you're finished. Very quiet house, very tight house. Um, when these windows are closed, um, you hear nothing outside. The other problem, one problem is that they are so airtight that um, you do need fresh air coming in. Uh huh. And there's a lot of devices out there to do that. All I'm going to do is just crack some windows. Uh huh. You were showing me earlier something out on the deck that allowed, that, that was on the outside of the deck. Could you explain that? Well, oh, that's just airflow through uh -huh. the ceiling here. Uh -huh. I have a very high R value in the ceiling, too. I have started out with um, two and a half inches of polyisonic foam, and then I have 12 inches. Um, of just fiberglass under that. Uh -huh. I actually ended up with an R value of, and there's a dead air space in there, and then there's a flowing air space. I actually ended up with an R value, well, I figured, of uh, 49 in the ceiling, 49 to 51. I'm going to just pan back so I can see how high the ceiling is. Holy cow. I don't know if this little flip camera is doing it justice, but. And this airflow, is, it isn't anything new. A lot uh -huh. of contractors do this, but. It, it does make for a, a cool house in the summer and a warm one in the winter. And all it is, there's... Exiting the back in door the soffit, into the deck. In the soffit, there's just a vent up here that takes in fresh air. Uh-huh. This Let's brown go, metal. Oh, uh-huh. Sucks in fresh air from underneath. And then it flows uh, right under the sheeting that's just over this uh, pro panel. And then up on the top there, you can see the ridge vent. Um, there's a type of insulation in there that keeps the weather out but lets the warm air out also. Uh -huh. So it makes for a very warm house in the winter because you have an airflow always going through it. So right now we're looking so you, out over what was the greenhouse below us, right? That's right. And then I'm just going to pan out here so we can kind of make a 360. Beautiful, beautiful view. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful large deck, too, allows you to really spend some time outside. It does. I always wanted a big deck, so I put a couple in the house. <laughs> uh-huh. So then this, this door that's leading over here is actually leading us into another room. This is a sunroom in, uh -huh. in one of the rooms. Well, originally, I was going to put a hot tub in here, and I still may. And the house is so warm. I mean, it is a little cool outside, even though it's been warm all day, but still, it's real cool with the wind, and yet it's real warm when you, the moment that you walk into this house. Yeah. So this is just a sunroom design uh -huh. that the architect and I uh, put in the house. I was like... We'll back up here so we can sun. see. Room to hang plants. Uh-huh. So this corner here, we had a hot tub design here. I still haven't decided if I'm going to put one in or not, but eventually yeah. I probably will. It would be nice to have one outside, too. You can this see everything done place. except the trim work and the uh -huh. doors and the floor. This is all cement board on the floor, and the reason for that is uh, this house is going to have in-floor heating. Mm -hmm. So a simple way to do in-floor heating is actually... You put the radiant heating tubes underneath this floor. Uh -huh. Not a lot of people pour a floor right into that radiant tubing. 
If you ever shot a screw through there or a nail and got a leak, you would raise havoc trying to find the leak and fix it. I see. I've heated a couple homes like this and you just strap your tubing up underneath the floor with large staples and then use this bubble wrap, which is 3 8 reflective bubble wrap. You make a dead air space between it and it works great for in-floor heating. It takes a little longer for it to heat up, but once it does, the more thermal mass you have over it, that's why I have this half-inch cement board. Uh -huh. uh, ceramic tile will go on top of this. You can use a dark tile in a room like this, and then the sun will help heat that dark tile exactly. and heat the home. <clears throat> And so the, and the floors throughout will be tile. That's right. That's right. And as we're, we're moving now, passing from the sunroom, this is... So this is going to be a, another maybe an office and exercise room. Uh-huh. Um, and you've got some you loft material loft up, up there. there. Beautiful. I'm not quite decided how I'm going to access this loft, but uh, possibly a spiral staircase or some kind of... Uh, Metal staircase going up to access. Uh -huh. There'll be obviously a railing around here. Right. I think I'll actually make this railing really a rebar. It's so much square footage. Yeah. And so many things that you can do, creative things that you can do with the space. No. Yeah. And I, I was thinking rebar would look really cool up here. Uh huh. Painted flat by. Got on the internet. Some guy in California has already done it. So oh. <laughs> it's not going to be a first, but. But still, it was an original idea. Yeah. It's going to look cool. I got it all drawn out. Uh -huh. out. I'm, gonna do it. I'm just going to keep following. So this is it. actually was only going to be a two bedroom house, even though it's a big home. Right. Uh, my cousin was helping me frame this room, and he said, Why don't we put a closet in here and it'd be considered another bedroom? So now we have a three bedroom house. There we go. So that's all it takes is a, a closet and a room, and that would be considered a bedroom. Considered a bedroom. This room is actually the master bedroom. And every window is just a picture window. I'm going to show our viewers what you get to see. That's right. And there's nothing real special about these windows. They're just double pane with a low E glass. Uh huh. And still a pretty good R value. But they're not trouble pane or anything. They're really not needed in a house like this. Um, this is the master closet. I always wanted the big closet, so it's a big walk in. <laughs> it's a little dark in there, so I don't know if it, you're going to be able to actually see how deep it is. A little dark in here. That van you see in the corner back there, that's actually a run out of water heater, um, and that's where I'm bending it. Uh -huh. I'll have that framed in. This is the master bathroom. I'll actually have a double sink here. Pocket door in here, and this is for the head, which will uh -huh. be back here in this corner. Um, walk in shower. Right. I always right. like these glass nice blocks. I so was able to pick up this glass block and get some light in here that way. Uh -huh. Plus, it gives you a halfway decent R value as far as glass goes. And privacy. That's right. And then this is going to be one of those uh, Japanese tubs that you. A soaking tub. Uh -huh. You walk up Beautiful. about three steps and jump in it. It's not really for soap or bathing, it's more of a soaking tub. Uh -huh. A relaxing tub. Exactly. So you'll have a hot tub and a Japanese tub. That's right. What one for privacy and one for sharing with your friends. That's right. And then we're back into this end of the house will be, uh, we'll be a half bath in this room. Uh huh. Toilet and sink. Right. Um, Not much light in there. Just a closet here. Uh huh. Linen closet. It'll be a full bath here. That's actually an oversized tub. Yes. Yeah, um, when I designed yeah. this room, I made it. Six by six, five by six feet. And I didn't realize that tubs weren't quite five feet, but I found one that fit in this space, so it, it's all worked out. Uh -huh. uh, this is a guest room. Uh, again, we got the cathedral ceilings. Oh, and there's a deck off the guest room. 
How beautiful is that? Yeah, this was kind this of This is spacious. Me and the garages down Two below. beautiful picture windows. This is over the garage, you were saying? That's right. And me and the garage is north facing, which is, or it's actually east facing. It's a lot of weather comes in this way. Uh huh. I wanted to protect the garage doors from snow piling up, so I figured I'll put a deck over here and that'll protect it, plus make a nice deck. Right. Beautiful. Well, Harry, what an incredible job you've done. There's a little room here. If you want to yes, let's look. This way. Uh -huh. And that's actually um, a cistern. Uh -huh. Two 1,500-gallon tanks. Um, I actually have a well down in this garage that I built first, down at this end. Uh -huh. And I already have a line buried up here that will go into this room. And that line will feed these two 1,500-gallon tanks. And then that line will come into the house and feed the house. So you've got your water all taken care of? That's right. Well, this has been fascinating. I mean, honestly, I wonder if you would mind if we kept an open offer to come back and see the home as you continue to complete it. Absolutely. Anytime. Wonderful. I'd love to do that. Well, thanks so much for granting us the interview. You're welcome. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.